Welcome to City This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's top stories, Global City volunteers continue their efforts in helping Typhoon Haiyan survivors in Oromok and Takloban City. We join Indonesia City volunteers as they welcome 29 families into their new home in Pulau Lombok Island. And we head to China as City volunteers teach environmental protection to residents young and old. We start the show in the Philippines in preparation for the upcoming large-scale aid distribution which will begin today, November 23rd, in Oromok City-like province. City volunteers have been distributing relief cards to residents in nine barangays. Meanwhile, in Tacloban City, City's Cash for Work program saw a positive response on its first day. Here's our story. It's early in the morning and once again, local residents gather at the local Chinese school. 2,300 disaster survivors, having received news of Tiji's cash for work program, are here to participate in the cleanup efforts. We sent out a notice yesterday, and look, so many people arrived today. This is what we had hoped for. I'm very happy that Tiji has been acknowledged by the people. As the implementation of the cash for work program has seen a positive response, a group of Tsuji volunteers headed to another seaside community in Anibong to implement the program there. After our interaction with the local residents here yesterday, we made a decision to begin the program here today. Currently, 470 people have shown up. Among the crowd is this 25-year-old young man who lost his parents, in-laws, brother and his one-year-old in the disaster. Only he and his wife survived. We feel helpless because we have no other way of making a living. We still need to leave, so we came to take part in the Cash for Work program. As part of the Cash for Work program, residents will receive 500 Philippines pesos, and this will indirectly help with the economic recovery in the affected areas. This is the Takloban Transport Terminal. As you can see, the street in front of me is bustling with traffic and people. Several main roads in the city are also back to normal. Business is also improving for the store vendors. Therefore, it's evident that both the lives of residents and businesses are slowly returning to normal. Happily waving and cheering, this has been a long-awaited moment for Ormark's residents, and they finally break into smiles. Long before the volunteers' arrival, residents have been waiting inside this basketball court. With so many people here, how to ensure everyone will receive a relief card? City volunteers came up with their way. The residents are lined up in alphabetical order according to their surnames, and just the surnames beginning with A to C alone account for 30 percent. According to the name list provided by the borough head, each family will receive a relief card. This is Philippines Tiji volunteer Ling Guorong, who is responsible for overseeing the delivery of aid supplies to each disaster area. During this relief operation in Ormong, I encountered a lot of short, uh, short, uh, shortage of uh, volunteer and uh, lack of uh, relief goods and also logistic. I have to have a positive uh, attitude. We have nine nine uh, uh, barangay uh, in uh, schedule for two days. Despite the difficulties encountered, Ling Guorong continues to wear a smile on his face and find ways to accomplish his mission, as his only wish is to see the disaster survivors rebuild their homes and get back on their feet as soon as possible. In Warsaw, Poland, at the 19th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Filipino delegation stood up to make its voice heard and asked for climate justice for all. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, the delegation became a symbol of the fight for world politicians to make a change to prevent further disasters. The Philippines. It has been 10 days since the Super Typhoon Haiyan has struck our country. We appreciate all the expressions of sympathy from all over the world. But we do not need sympathy. What we need at the moment is solidarity. It was one of the strongest statements today at COP19. 
Following the typhoon Haiyan, the Filipino delegation was expecting more concrete decisions and actions at this convention on climate change. For them, there is no doubt that this kind of natural disasters are directly related to global warming. We've been having storms, we've been having flooding in our country, but the intensity, the frequency, the gravity of the, the damage that these typhoons are causing to our country and our people, these are not normal. If it's not climate change, I don't know how else to call it. Climate change diplomats and scientists agree that these events will occur more and more if strong policy changes are not made really soon. The fact that there are more and stronger extreme events is a fact, and science is telling us this, so we should not be surprised to see more and more of this. And this tragedy in the Philippines, it, it's, it's terrible for, for what has happened, but it's also a big reminder to all of us of the need of urgency. Two weeks into the negotiations, what we're still seeing and hearing are still more talks. It's all talk. So now we're saying we can't afford to just be talking and talking among ourselves. Let's do something. Countries are implementing quite a large range of policies, but in total, this is not sufficient to keep climate change in safe levels. What we need to see is a significant shift in policies. More countries need to do more. The main discussions focused on climate change justice as well as the implementation of the Adaptation Fund a global fund where the countries with the most important CO2 emissions have to pay in order to compensate other countries during eventual climate disasters. Climate justice is a kind of the uh, richest countries, they emit a lot and, uh, to change the climate. And the poor people uh, suffer the extreme weather. So it's, it's, it's a very complicated to calculate the, the real loss and damage. And to this we say we would like to light a candle for climate justice. At the end of the day, it's about people caring about each other, showing love for each other, and you know, really committing to working together. If we could only see a little bit of that from the world leaders here at this official meeting, that would really make a big change in the world. Climate justice now for all. Also pouring out their love to help those in the Philippines are Tsuji volunteers in Thailand and the United States. Students at the San Dimas Tsuji Academy were encouraged to give a little of their love, while Tsuji volunteers in Thailand also took to the streets to canvas for donations to help disaster survivors. <laughs> With donation boxes in hand, Bangkok City volunteers and the village head of a local community are going door to door to canvas for donations. Though most families are not well off or are willing to give what they can. City volunteers in Thailand set up a fundraising campaign beginning on November 15th in hopes of gathering the love for those affected by Typhoon Haiyan. I feel the suffering of typhoon victims in the Philippines, so we should gather our love and send it to those affected as a way to encourage them and give them strength in their recovery. I can empathize with these flood survivors and I hope we can reach out with a helping hand. When the volunteers came today, I seized the opportunity to give. It may not be a lot, but it is my blessing for them. Knowing that Tsuji is raising funds, many residents who have experienced similar disasters themselves donate without hesitation. Seeing how Typhoon Haiyan devastated the Philippines, it reminded me of how Thailand went through flooding and a tsunami as well. Many countries helped us then, so I want to do what I can to help these survivors rebuild their homes. Meanwhile, in the United States, prior to the start of class at the St. Stephen's Tsuji Academy in Los Angeles, students are giving a little of their love as well. I usually just donate money and have never held a donation box to raise funds. It was an unforgettable and moving experience. Besides giving to the donation boxes, one student also brought his bamboo coin bank to contribute. Through such fundraising events, the students are given a chance to learn to give to those in greater need, while at the same time bring hope to disaster survivors far away.
In July, Indonesia's Sumatra was hit by a major earthquake. Among other areas damaged by the tremor is the island of Pulau Lombok. In response, city volunteers arrived with 100 metric tons of rice for the island's residents and also worked to rebuild the homes of 29 families. The houses were finished earlier this month and city volunteers handed over the keys to grateful recipients. <laughs> Walking into his new home, Hermento is all smiles. Bigger and sturdier than his old home, what's not to like? Such a big home. Even I were to work in Malaysia for two to three years, there is no way I could save up enough to build something like this, much less by working here. In July, Sumatra was hit by a major earthquake that brought devastation to many of the region's island chains, including Pola Lombok. Arriving to distribute rice in the disaster's wake, volunteers discovered that many locals had been left homeless by the tremor and had no means to rebuild. The county had told us what the local residents need, and that included help with housing. We then brought this information back to Jakarta. Eighty-five to ninety percent of our villagers are farmers. Their income is very low. In total, volunteers helped rebuild 29 houses in the space of five months. With their concrete walls and tile roofs, they are a vast improvement of what the villagers formerly lived in. It is hard to express how much respect and emotion we have in our hearts. Thank God for bringing you volunteers here to help with this rebuilding project. Disasters bring damage and pain in their wake, but with the right dosage of love, both land and residents can be healed. For overseas city volunteers, what they look forward to the most each year is the trip back to Taiwan to take part in the annual volunteer training seminar. Besides an opportunity to meet Master Zhen Yin, volunteers also learn important lessons that is taken back with them to help further city's mission in their home countries. Prior to moving overseas, Chen Jing often joined her neighbors in sorting recyclables. Little did she know, she would eventually join Siji in Los Angeles and help organize study group sessions. We gain the most when taking on responsibilities. It is moving to share our experiences and stories of change with our fellow volunteers. Though born into a Christian family, Chen Jing does Tzu's work without hindrance, as she hopes to help shoulder some of the master's responsibilities. It is just like how you want to help shoulder your mom's burdens. Not only will you take on these responsibilities with courage, but you will also excel in what you do. Another volunteer, Jiang Lian from China's Beijing, hopes to take what she learned in Taiwan and further promote Tzu's ideals to the general public. Right now in Beijing, we have been promoting the making of enzymes. Besides enzymes, we also hope to include Jingzi aphorisms and bamboo coin banks, so it's like a three-in-one philosophy, one with which we can easily call on bodhisattvas to join us. As Jiang Ling works at a government environmental agency, she hopes to inspire others to lend a helping hand. I realized that everyone has a heart of compassion and love for our planet, they just don't know it. When they understand their responsibility, it will inspire them to join the ranks of volunteers safeguarding Mother Earth. City volunteers from abroad have all gained much through this trip to the city's homeland in Taiwan and all vow to spread the great love one step further once back home. Dedicated to saving lives and extending care to all is the fundamental mission of medicine and also the essence of Tsuji's humanistic medical care. To remind doctors of their initial aspiration for entering the medical field, each year, Dalin Tsuji Hospital organizes various activities to inspire doctors not only to treat their patients' illnesses, but heal their hearts as well. 
The piece of paper on the wall speaks out this family's wish to have a clean home. Single father Mr. Chen needs to receive dialysis treatment every two days. Today, the Darling City Hospital medical team is here to fulfill this family's wish. <laughs> Ensuring that no corner goes unnoticed, staff members bend over to give the bathroom a thorough scrub. While cleaning the home, medical staff find that most of the foodstuffs in the Chen home are pickled, which is a huge burden for Mr. Chen's body. <laughs> Combining medical and community care, doctors hope to be a part of their patients' lives in addition to treating their illnesses. Hence, Darling City Hospital staff and team of doctors make it a point to pay monthly visits to patients. This grandma's wish is not to travel, but just to be able to walk to the nearby temple to chat with her friends. It's such a simple wish. If we had not come here today and experienced it for ourselves, I don't think we would have ever been able to understand the essence of medicine. Where the sick cannot travel, the Darling City Hospital medical team will reach. Through these home visits, doctors find a deeper connection with the lives of their patients while bringing love and compassion in their wake. In China, ninth grade students visited Zhisheng Recycling Station to help keep the place tidy. Meanwhile, visitors to the Quinsan Recycling Station learned the importance of safeguarding Mother Earth. Here's more. Listening to Quinsan Recycling Station's volunteers speak about ways of protecting the planet, visitors from Nanjing and Anhui are all ears, despite traveling up to four hours to reach today's destination. Upon seeing the recycling volunteers sort recyclables, the residents also give it a try. Seeing these recycling volunteers carefully sort through the items has inspired us greatly. Once we head home, we will spread this mission to others in our community. Besides the residents from Nanjing, those from Anhui also gain valuable experience during their day at the recycling station. Protecting the environment starts with me. I'm a teacher, so I will pass on these ideals to my students. Small acts like picking up a Coke bottle or not littering can benefit society at large. Environmental protection is a fundamental act that everyone must shoulder to keep our planet clean. In the same breath, Dongguan City volunteers also do their part in spreading environmentalism. Recently, at a local park, Cici volunteers held an event to promote their mission, and many residents stopped to listen to ways on how to reduce their carbon footprint. <laughs> on this day, ninth grade students from Taiwan's Business Ben Stongguan School visited the Cici Ri Shen Recycling Education Center. <laughs> The young students help sweep the floor, clean the windows, and organize many secondhand items. Through the event, the parents who accompany their children also learn that overprotecting their kids is not always the best policy. Modern day children are mostly overprotected by parents, so it's nice for the kids to do some community work. They can experience what teamwork or helping others in need is like. It's better for them. Unlike their usual day out, coming to the recycling station, families are learning that keeping the planet clean can also be a fun family event. The energetic students from Taiwan's Kaohsiung Da'ai Kindergarten recently took to the streets to promote vegetarianism to the general public, and their determination inspired many to go meatless. With posters in hand and shouting out slogans, students of the Kaohsiung Dai Kindergarten are promoting vegetarianism on the streets. Oh, 
I think this is wonderful because we can help reduce carbon emission. They are so young yet so compassionate and sweet. Beginning today, I will take on one meatless meal to start with. The youthful and energetic vibe of these youngsters catches the attention of many and successfully invites members of the public to adopt a vegetarian diet. We want to remind everyone to go vegetarian. The children made posters and songs themselves. They hope to spread the ideal of vegetarianism to everyone. Knowing that actions speak louder than words, the children are demonstrating their love for the planet through taking on a meatless diet. In Taiwan's Pingdong County, staff members of the Environmental Protection Bureau in Jinmen County recently visited the Ciji Jiazuo Recycling Station. During their visit, staff members not only learned how to sort recyclables thoroughly, but also realized many things are reusable. Welcoming their guests with smiles, this is the scene at the Ciji Jiazuo Recycling Station in Pingdong County, Taiwan. Today, staff members of the Environmental Protection Bureau in Jingmen County are learning how to incorporate environmental concepts into their daily lives. On the top of the shelves, one see many second-hand wheelchairs. When community residents need to use such medical equipment, they can borrow them free of charge. We are giving these items a second lease on life. It is harder for members of the public to sort their recyclables thoroughly. If we can work with environmental organizations, we can definitely reduce the burden on our earth and make the planet a better place. Sorting recyclables should start with families. Suji's concept is in line with our goal of reducing garbage and recycling. Touched by the volunteers' dedication, staff members of the Environmental Protection Bureau promised to join hands with members of the public and together make the planet a cleaner place. To give new recruits a better understanding of the Ciji Foundation, volunteers of the Ciji Vietnam Liaison Office organized a volunteer training seminar. Let's take a look. <laughs> Frown and a smile are both possible, why not smile? A Jin's aphorism gives Chen Shiyue a chance for reflection. When you say hello to others, with or without a smile, there is a big difference. Those who always wear a smile make other people feel more comfortable. Throughout the day, the Chinese learn more about Ciji's humanistic values. In fact, helping the needy not only gives them joy, but also makes me happy. Learning Ciji's 10 precepts in Vietnamese, these Chinese have gained a better understanding of the NGO and its philosophy. Core of Ciji's humanitarianism lies in the virtues of benevolence, compassion, emphatic joy, equanimity. The purpose of our learning together is to settle our restless hearts down. Here in Vietnam, with the efforts of so many volunteers, the seeds of love are certain to flourish. At the end of today's show, we follow a team of 55 medical staff and city volunteers as they head towards the Philippines early Friday morning. The team will focus on helping residents in Oromok and Tacloban City, as both were affected most by the recent disaster. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.